At the 2022 United Nations Climate Change Conference in Egypt, Foreign Affairs Minister Simon Kofé made the strange and dystopic announcement that the islands of Tuvalu plan to create a digital nation in the cloud. This is in response to the climate change crisis as the Pacific Ocean will slowly swallow the islands in the near future. This is also a call to action for many countries to respond to the climate change crisis. I explained that although we needed global collaboration to end the climate crisis, we in the Pacific would not sit idly by and wait for the world to act. Now, many of you may not be familiar with the country of Tuvalu, like I was. In fact, the only thing I knew about Tuvalu before this announcement is that one twelfth of the entire gross national income for the country comes from websites like Twitch. And now you're like, Twitch? So you see, there are a ton of different domain extensions on the web. They include .com, .edu, .gov. They all sort of serve different purposes, with .edu being more educational, .gov being more government-associated web pages, and so on. But there are even more domain extensions based on the web pages of certain countries. Like for example, you got .us for the United States, you have .mx for Mexico, .ca for Canada, .eu for the European Union, .ma for Morocco, .np for Nepal. You have so many different domain extensions and it just keeps going. Each country has that specific extension that is used specifically for web pages relating to the country. All except for one, really. This brings the domain of Twitch into question. You see, the domain is twitch.tv. And for obvious reasons, people understand that .tv to mean television. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Twitch is an online streaming platform where you watch things just as you would watch, like, television. So why is it so weird for it to have .tv in the extension? It's just for TV, right? Well, you'd be wrong. It actually stands for the domain extension for the country of Tuvalu. And now you may ask, wait, why are they able to use a different country's extension for their web page? And the answer is, they pay a lot of money to use it. In fact, because of those licensing agreements based on Twitch.tv or any other .tv extension on the web page, Tuvalu earns more than $7 million per year just on licensing the .tv in the web page. But what else is Tuvalu, besides just a lucrative domain extension? Tuvalu is a country and microstate in the Polynesian region of Oceania. It is comprised of three reef islands and six atolls. It is about halfway between Hawaii and Australia and has a total population of roughly 11,000 people. The total land area of the islands is about 10 square miles. For comparison, Hawaii is roughly 11,000 square miles. It's crazy. Tuvalu is in fact the fourth smallest country by land in the entire world, right behind Nauru, Monaco, and the Vatican City. And slowly but surely, Tuvalu is getting smaller as the Pacific Ocean sea levels rise and the island's land slowly gets buried under the sea. But their plan for it is to put those islands on the cloud. But is that even enough? So what's the point of putting something on the cloud? What does a digital nation look like? At the UN Climate Change Conference, as Simon Kofé virtually stood on the digital recreation of a replica of Tea Fualiku, an islet on the northern part of Funafuti, he said that the islands, islands like this one won't survive rapid temperature increases, rising sea levels and droughts, so we'll recreate them virtually. Piece by piece, we'll preserve our country, provide solace to our people, and remind our children and our grandchildren what our home once was. As dystopian as it sounds, it's a haunting thought to think that a country could just be gone from the face of the earth. Now, this isn't the only country to no longer exist. For example, you have dozens of other countries like Yugoslavia, Babylonia, North and South Vietnam, just to name a few, but there's one key difference between all those other countries and Tuvalu, and that is their land still exists above water. And this is the importance of Tuvalu's mission to preserve their country on the cloud. Although the physical land of the country is gone, 
their digital nation will always exist forever. Though we have not seen the effectiveness of preserving a country's land and culture through digital means, this would be the first radical step in creating a history of a country fully accessible only on the cloud. Especially as we advance more with things like virtual reality and other technologies. But will that even work out? I mean, will we even remember Tuvalu as well once everything's just recreated digitally? Will we even access those records of Tuvalu? I mean, I never really knew anything about Tuvalu except for the fact that the domain extension was there and Tuvalu never even came across my mind until that UN conference when they announced this. Hell, in a year or two, will you even remember watching this random video on this random YouTube channel about Tuvalu? And is a digital nation worth preserving? In the 2022 game Sonic Frontiers, yes, I am mentioning a Sonic game as a metaphor for preserving a digital nation. So if you don't want spoilers about the story of Sonic Frontiers, which I'm honestly surprised you care so much about a story for a Sonic game, but just go ahead and jump to the timestamp listed in the video. But anyway, in the 2022 game Sonic Frontiers, Sonic comes across an ancient race who had struggled with a deadly enemy known as the End. No, not, not the end of the video. The enemy was known as the end. No, stop. Anyway, this great enemy destroyed their planet and the ancients were forced to abandon their previous home and look for a new home. They found that their energy source, the Chaos Emeralds, were attracted to a nearby planet by the presence of a Master Emerald. This planet was Earth, actually but it was tens of thousands of years before the events of the game. In an effort to preserve their culture and homeworld, these ancient beings created the Cyberspace, an advanced version of the Metaverse. With the Cyberspace, the Ancient Elder declares that all their hopes, their dreams, and their memories can be uploaded to Cyberspace and accessed at any time. They took their culture, their way of life, and preserve their home in the digital world. As time moves on, generation after generation will be able to experience what their home once was. But the enemy known as the End eventually catches up to them and they're forced to fight again as another war breaks out. They then contain the End within their cyberspace after many of the ancients died in the fight. As Sonic, you enter the islands thousands of years after the war and find the remnants of the civilization in the form of portals to access the cyberspace and little remnants of the ancients known as Coco. These Cocos were known as the ancients' lucky charms and besides cyberspace, the Coco are the last remaining remnants of this ancient civilization as they are imbued with the final wishes of their caretaker. Throughout the game, as you perform some quests to fulfill the Coco's final desires, they perish, leaving the world behind. After reliving their flashbacks, Sonic continues on and those memories are gone forever. Even when accessing cyberspace, Sonic is only able to traverse the worlds created from his own memory as the program creates these memories based on the user. As the last Coco would eventually perish, the ancient's digital world, their digital culture, fades away into a distant memory to never be accessed again. So what was the point of digitizing it all if there needed to be a surviving member of the ancients to fully access it? Is there a point to making everything about the ancient's culture digital if one day it'll all be gone? Is there a point on making a digital recreation of Tuvalu if one day in the future there exists that chance that every descendant of Tuvalu eventually dies out and no more exists? To answer that, I'm gonna move on to one of my favorite games of all time. In the 2021 DLC for The Outer Wilds, Echoes of the Eye, there exists a similar dilemma. Now, I'll be talking about spoilers about this game, so if you don't want to be spoiled, please jump to the timestamp in the video, but I do highly recommend that you try this game out. 
In the echoes of the eye, there exists a species known as... Well, I guess they don't really have a set name in the game. They are sort of these owl-elk hybrids, but we'll refer to them as the Alks. Based on the cryptic slide reels, the player is able to piece together the story of the Alks. It all started when one of their members observed and was in awe of the Eye of the Universe and the signal it transmitted. This signal was seemingly older than the universe itself. They were so enthralled by the Eye that they demolished their homeworld, scavenging the pieces to create a ship that would take them towards the Eye of the Universe. But the Eye of the Universe was not what they expected. The Alks seemingly received a vision of this unknown cause of death and destruction of our universe. The method seems unclear, but one thing was certain was that the inhabitants wanted to prevent the eye from causing any sort of damage. So they hid the signal of the eye. Then the remorse sets in. They began to lament over the loss of their home. Their home that they destroyed completely to come to this unknown galaxy. They left behind everything, and they couldn't even go back. There was no home left to go back to. So they decided to piece together their home in a virtual way. After much experimentation, they developed a completely virtual reality where their mind can travel back to an identical virtual recreation of their home. They took their culture, their way of life, and preserve their home in a digital world. From there, they were able to fully live in their home world again. They lived in the virtual space for so long that their physical bodies perished and decomposed. Mentally, they were still able to live in their world and be with one another indefinitely. The player is also able to enter their virtual home, although they are seen as a trespasser. For a short amount of time, you are able to fully experience what it's like to be in their homeworld. All until the fire goes out. Following the extinguishing of the flame, their digital world, their digital culture, fades away into a distant memory, never to be accessed again. So, again, is there a point in making everything about the Alks culture digital, if one day it'll be gone? Is there a point to making a digital recreation of Tuvalu? If one day in the future there exists that chance that the digital files of the island get deleted? Or buried under the infinitely increasing amount of data, just like the island gets buried by the rising sea levels? What's the point of it all? The concepts of the digitization of the ancient civilizations presented in both Sonic Frontiers and Echoes of the Eye is analogous to the predicament facing Tuvalu. As the ancients lost their homeworld due to the end, and the Alks lost their homeworld due to their own actions, Tuvalu faces losing all of their land to the rising sea levels. But the point of it all is pretty obvious. Just like the ancients in Sonic Frontiers and the Alks in Echoes of the Eye, the point is about being in a familiar place. It's about creating the perfect digital home, but they become so engrossed in it, they leave behind everything in the current world they're in, just to feel at home. This is the same reason why places like Chinatown exist, or Koreatown, or Little Bangladesh, and so many others. Everyone wants to bring home with them, wherever they go. They want to feel the familiarity of being at home, surrounded by their loved ones, wherever they are. But is perfectly preserving a digital nation possible? With our current technology like virtual reality, I don't think a digital nation can be preserved in the same way that it existed on Earth. It'll always feel different. It's like an archaeologist discovering artifacts from a long time ago. It doesn't feel like it's a part of us. It feels ancient, even if it was just a few years ago. For the 11,000 people of Tuvalu, the digital recreation of their home won't be technologically advanced like the Ancients' home in Sonic Frontiers, or the Alks' home in Echoes of the Eye, so it will never fully feel like the same way of being on the island, being at their home. But I don't think that's really the point. The 
point of preserving isn't to recreate the exact feeling of being on the island, it's to recognize that the country of Tuvalu existed and that its people are important to this earth. And whether you are a resident of Tuvalu or an outsider, upon visiting Tuvalu on the cloud, we each learn about their rich culture and make Tuvalu a part of us as well. So is digitizing a nation even worth it? Well, for the case of Tuvalu, yes, it's so important. It will always be with us. But to think of the idea that Tuvalu will always be here and we will not gives a whole new meaning of the importance of preserving Tuvalu. Knowing that we won't always have it tomorrow brings us to understand that we need places like Tuvalu to be here. Not only for us, but for the residents of Tuvalu and for the people who come after. Because when we have our history memorialized and digitized, we can experience it for that fleeting moment we're here on this earth. Just before we join Tuvalu as just a part of the Earth's story. And who knows, maybe in the future, someone or something will come across this little blue planet and they will see our records. And for a moment, they'll understand what it was to be human, and to have a nation like Tuvalu exist here on the planet, and what it was like for us to have it here with us before it was gone forever. <laughs>